Hello everyone and good morning. It is now time for another podcast. Happy New Year everybody. It is not only the first podcast of the new year, however, it is the first podcast of the new decade and boy what a decade it is going to be and we're going to kick it off today with a very good episode and in this episode we're going to be talking about just basically what to expect this year from gaming and um, mainly the PS5 based on an accessory that we got for the PS4 just this past week and that will be released in North America this week and that is the DualShock 4 back button attachment I'm going to go on and say it right now based on this accessory I'm already predicting that the PS5 DualShock 5 or whatever they call the controller will probably have back paddles on the um controller itself so that's going to be a good thing the one thing that I hope that they actually get right that they mess up on with the do it with the back uh, button attachment on uh, DualShock 4 is the um, accessibility I remember and I can personally tell you from experience that the DualShock 4 back button attachment while good in a lot of areas, they really screwed up when it came to accessibility, and I'm not sure why they did that. You know, I mean, the way it works is this. You put it on your controller, and in order to program it, you have to push the screen button down until it flashes. Then you have to um, push the back button you want to program. It'll cycle through the buttons on the controller. Now... My thoughts on that, that was a very uh, odd move. I think they should have done something similar to uh, scuff controllers or something like that where you hold the paddle down, you push the button you want to assign it to, and you're pretty much good to go. That would have made it a lot easier, not only for people who might have, say, uh, issues with vision, but issues with um, dexterity, hand dexterity, motor skills, etc. I think that, in my opinion, the PS5 and Xbox Series X controllers will probably have back buttons on their controllers, uh, either at launch, or they might release that as a later variant of the controller. Um, As for this year, let's see. There is supposed to be a huge surprise for Mortal Kombat 11, or Mortal Kombat in general, I'm wondering what that'll be. I'm hoping that it will be um, either A, that big uh, collection that they were talking about with every game uh, from one all the way up through like eight or nine on one disc. Or, if not that, they need to make it um, a Shaolin Monks remaster. Maybe you do like a Mythologies collection do uh, Mortal Kombat Mythologies uh, completely remake Special Forces the way it was meant to be made, not the way we got it with the crappy graphics and the very subpar gameplay. I did not like that at all. But back in 2000, when I was uh, still young and growing up and learning the ways of the world, come on. You know, I thought that was the greatest thing ever. And then looking back at it, it's like, oh my God, this one game was literally the um, unwanted child of the Mortal Kombat franchise. And I think if they were to do a collection and remake Mythology Sub-Zero, remake Special Forces the right way, the way it should be, then that would be pretty good. And then release the Shaolin Monks remaster or a remake on top of that, you know, make it a collection you know, price accordingly, you got a winner. But I'm going to go on and say that I can almost be safe and say that the big surprise we're going to get this year for Mortal Kombat is going to be expanded crossplay, which would be a good thing. Um, I think that would be a very good way to introduce more of the player pool, get it increased, um, get it to where more people will be playing the game. And they'll probably uh, do a thing where with Combat Pack 2, I would love to see a Combat Pack 2. But, you know, that's probably going to be a given in today's economic climate and 
the way games are made these days, they're going to monetize these fighting games for what they can. I mean, look at games like Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. You know, I haven't invested in that, and people have been wanting me to play that game and check it out. But the reason why I have not been invested in that game is because of their business model. Instead of giving you two or three uh, fighter packs with uh, six or seven characters apiece, they're giving you, like, I think they're on, like, season three, I think. Uh, season two or three. And you're getting maybe three to four characters and a stage. To me, that's not good value. In my humble opinion, good value is, you know, give you, like, five or six characters at a time per pack like NRS does. Now, um, I'm pretty sure that whatever NRS has cooking up next for the PS5 and Xbox Series X, well, my, they may push the uh, DLC uh, envelope up to 10 characters. We don't know what they're going to do next. The point is, is I know we're going to see a combat pack too. What I don't know is, are they going to maybe drop a big update and add maybe classic stages, stage fatalities, um, friendships, babalities, and animalities to Mortal Kombat 11 this year? Or are they going to do the whole um, collection route with all the old games? Or are they going to remaster Shaolin Mux and remake Mythologies? Personally, as far as mythologies, I think they should redo it with today's technology and make it where um, Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub-Zero, make it the way it should have been made back in the 90s. You know, make it the right way and make it, you know, a good uh, side-scrolling beat-em-up, not with that cruddy um, turnaround control. That, that shouldn't have been there. Um, I think if they're going to remake uh, Mythology Sub-Zero, and this is just speculation, they should do it the right way with today's tech, and then kind of let that be a send-off for the current-gen consoles, and then the next-gen consoles get whatever fighting game entry that they have coming up next, because NetherRealm does a very good job. And this is a quick shout-out to all the staff at NetherRealm. Ed Boone, Tyler Lansdowne, Derek Ertzig, Stephanie Brownback, everybody at NRS. You do a very good job at what you do and making your product. And I commend you for that and keep up the good work. Um, now, as for the, P you know, the PS5 and Xbox Series X, I think that as for accessibility, I think they should make that their priority as far as, um, not main features, but like make it kind of a baked in thing, not make it where we have to get it via an update. Just give it to us out of the box because that's going to be the norm for today's uh, society and that should, you know, it'll get a lot more people going in and buying the product at launch. Now, as for, um, as for, like, games to expect, I know we're going to get Godfall, we're going to get, uh, probably the next Horizon on the PS5, the next Halo on Xbox Series X. I'm pretty sure we're going to get the new God of War, a Demon Souls remake. I would love, personally, though, to see a, either a Symphony of the Night remake or a uh, Legend of Dragoon remake. I mean, that would be awesome. Because I know, I mean, I'm going to get a PS5, that's for sure. You know, that that's already, you know, a given. I'm getting a PS5. You know, I've already made my mind up. The point being is that, um, I think that with this next generation, I think... I don't think we're going to see a lot of remasters because there's going to be backwards compatibility this time around. I'm hoping to see more newer IPs, uh, sequels to our favorite franchises, etc. Now, as for um, MK, honestly, I don't know what the surprise is going to be, and I'm hoping that it's going to be something that will really shake things up. 
I'm already going to guess that I know we're going to get a big update from Mortal Kombat 11 this week because of the Joker. I'm hoping that when we get the Joker, that we get cross-play on Locked Out of Beta, and being able to play with Xbox, PC, and Switch players in all game modes, that would be awesome. Um, and then, let's see, stage fatalities, finishers, they'll probably add that at the very end of the game's life cycle, which is sad. I think they should add it early on, because... To me, that is uh, the pinnacle of what Mortal Kombat's about. And, you know, come on, at the end of last, the last game, Mortal Kombat X, they updated it at the very last uh, part of the game, the big update, where it got GGPO netcode and um, rollback netcode. <clears throat> you got the pit, stage fatalities, all this stuff. Um, I think that they should... Not wait until the very end of the game's life to give us all these features. They should give it to us early on. But if they're going to support it for years to come, they said, they should um, definitely consider a next-gen version and maybe give us some features in the next-gen version for PS5 and Xbox Series X that the PS4 and Xbox One versions did not have. Such as, I don't know... Maybe give us a couple of new characters. Maybe give us, um, I don't know, Creative Fighter. I know I'm the, probably the only one in the world that wants Creative Fighter about now. But my point being, I just think that this year is going to be the year of Mortal Kombat and the year of the next generation consoles. So, with that being said, I hope everybody has a very great start to trans or is having a very great start to 2020 and to the new decade. And in the next episode, I'm going to be discussing my thoughts and my hopes for the future of the WWE video game series. Until next time, so long everyone, and peace out.